Okay, next question, and you have a minute for this. You're doing, you're doing well. Uh, we'll start with Mary. We trust that all of you are here because you want to serve our community, but on a more personal level, why have you chosen public education specifically as your outlet for community service? How do you expect that your resume or you personally will benefit? If you do not have children in the district schools, please also address the common concern that this is not a natural fit for your personal experience. Mary. It's kind of three parts. Um, okay. Um, I'll tackle the how do I benefit question first. Um, I, really, when you when you serve on a, a nonprofit board, you the benefit that you reap from that is watching other other people grow. The, the people that you're there to serve, and that can't be rivaled by anything else. It just that feeling is just amazing. Um, the other part of it, um, I think I bring to the table a very unique perspective in that I understand the special education system. Um, I've been a child advocate, and um, I it, a lot of people don't understand that, and we've never had anybody on this school board who has really thoroughly understood that system. And I think that I would be a real benefit to the board and, and to parents and the kids in, in that aspect. Thank you. Carl. Okay. <clears throat> Why did I choose public ed? Well, after 30 plus years of being in public ed, um, it was the right choice. Uh, you know, quite frankly, the reason I got into education was uh, the experience I had in public schools that did not work. Teachers that were ineffective had a huge impression on me. So even though I was a very young student at Tula Cigos back in the day when it wasn't a part of the Carmel Unified, I could tell the difference between people that were effective teaching and people that weren't. Even as a kid, I mean, you know, it's kind of a human thing. So I got involved in education, and I thought, I'll make a difference. I'll see to it that if I teach, it'll be effective, and everybody's going to get uh, the very best I can do. And I'm going to find out what those needs are. Secondly, I thought, well, if I get into administration, I can hire people that are effective with students. And um, I spent my career doing that, and I think that that's been something that I've been very proud of. A lot of teachers I've hired the district over the years, for many years, are still there at Carmel Middle School and at uh, Carmel High. Well, when we arrived here 10 years ago with our two sons, they started in Carmel District. I, um, all I knew was that River School was a very good school. And then I started, uh, another parent got me involved, we started to look into it, and found that the academic performance of the middle school and the high school as the kids went through the system was not what we as a community should expect and not what the board and the district were claiming. And I became an advocate for academic excellence in the schools. Sort of fell into it and became an old obsession. I was at almost every single school board meeting from 2003 to about 2009. And the district has done an extraordinary job. We are the best district in the state now. So um, I also had a superb public school education back in New York. I went to Stuyvesant High School, one of the finest public schools in the nation. And what to get out of it? Well, I'm officially retired, just the satisfaction of seeing our community schools as strong as they possibly could be. Thank you. Um, I'm Carol Hall. I'm a the reason I'm, um, I'm doing this is because I was also a public school child um, when we moved here from um, England and studied up about the um, education system here in America. I believe in the U.S. Um, public education department and um, I was working for Bristol Myers Squibb in the research department after college. And then I got married and had children, and I realized I couldn't be superwoman and do both. That was work and raise my children. So I decided to um, retire from my job and um, commit 100% to my children. And with the going through the public education system and, and coming back from a research um, background, 
I have a big passion for education and um, helping our public school system. As far as benefits, um, I, I, have, I see no benefits to myself except to see the kids happy. And that makes me really happy too. And then, well, I, um, the reason why I chose public education to um, give community service um, on for the past 18 years I've been on the school board because I work in um, public education. I uh, help school districts do bond issues and other financings. And so when I chose to run for school board, actually was asked by several other people in our community to run for the school board because of my professional expertise in the area of finance for school districts. So that is why I chose public education. Um, there hasn't been a personal benefit to me. When I first ran for school board, my son was in preschool. Um, that He was two years old. When he became four, he didn't go to the public school. I chose to continue on with the school board because I believe in our public school system and I really wanted to help out with our public schools, even though it wasn't going to benefit me personally. Okay, question three, and you have 45 seconds. Time's going down. <laughs> Pretty soon you go, one second. <laughs> okay, 45 seconds. Carmel Unified per student spending is in the top 5% in the nation, and the district is consistently rated in the top 10% in many categories in the state of California. However, the state is ranked 48th in the nation for student performance, and we face an increasingly competitive global economy. Oddly, the district has no information on how it stacks up nationally or internationally on student performance. Moreover, at a recent school board meeting, board members expressed the viewpoint that the district has no obligation to exceed state standards. Should the board research national and international educational standards and apply them here? And that, uh, Carl. Well, actually, the Carmel schools have um, been ranked nationally. And um, one of those vehicles has been through advanced placement testing and the number of students that are actually enrolled in advanced placement courses. Um, our rank isn't particularly high, uh, but it is one of the thousand schools in America that is a part of that ranking. And um, I think that's a a really good question. And I think we are so absorbed with doing well on our local and state testing that it's been kind of hard to see over the top of that into the national perspective. Richard. I believe we should be comparing ourselves to the best in state and nation and national. And I have been uh, accused of being too quantitative on this, but this is an area where uh, we should not, not that we necessarily apply, but we should know how we stand against our peers, against the people in the schools, the districts, the countries that we should be comparing ourselves with. And those are the top, those are the best. Um, I was looking recently at the Healthy Children's Survey, which, based, which, is, which measures uh, <coughs> drug and alcohol use and bullying and things like that, and my question was, our numbers are surprised. How do we rate against the other schools like us in these areas? And I can't. And so I believe we should. I don't necessarily think we should be applying national educational standards like no job left behind here, but we should know where we stand. Rita. Um, it would it would be nice if we could um, apply it here. I don't know how we would do that. Um, Carl is correct, and I think it's the U.S. News or uh, one of those national magazines that did Nash, um, rank us, and I don't know if we were 361 out of 1,000 or something. That was national. I know as far as SATs, that's an easier way to um, rank schools too, and I think um, as far as the state goes, uh, our SAT scores were like 1506 or something, and so we're ranked maybe around 79 as far as the state goes. So there are some numbers that rank us with the SATs and API scores and things like that. Um, we can certainly look into it, um, but I think it'd be a little bit more difficult than we think on how to do that. 
actually last week we um, just got the great news that we were ranked in the top 2% nationwide in terms of our advanced placement scores. And we're really proud of that. Um, it is something that we have um, achieved, not just are we at the top of the state, but we're at the top nationally as well and being recognized that way. We also recently won an award for music education in our district. We are among um, the top 150 communities in the entire nation as well. So we aren't just teaching academics, although we're reaching the highest levels of that as well, but we are also um, at the very pinnacle in terms of getting that whole child's education and involving arts and music into our curriculum. I think we absolutely should look into studies to see how we stand on a national level. Um, no Child Left Behind is up for reauthorization. It's in Congress. It eventually will be reauthorized, and there's going to be major changes coming down when it is. Um, they're offering the, the waivers right now. There's a deadline in, the, in this month in November and another one coming up in January for states to request the waivers. And uh, Torlickson isn't sure what he's going to do about that yet. But the estimate for California to be eligible for a waiver um, in cost is $1.6 billion. $800 million of that is um, said to be estimated for curriculum and uh, textbook changes. So the national standard obviously is different from the state standard. And you have to wonder why that is and um, why it costs so much to go towards the federal um, trend on that. And there are movements out there, too. Thanks, Thanks. Sorry, I have to watch more closely.